Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Dialogue to Destiny. Our goal is to engage in discussions that lead to personal and systematic change. These conversations can broach subjects that some may find offensive. It is not the intent of Dialogue to Destiny to in any way offend. Our intent is to encourage open dialogue so that collectively we can all move forward. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Dialogue to Destiny. Um, today, Steve and I are alone. No guests. You know, just me and him. We're going to fight it out over some issues uh, that I think are pretty contentious issues. And I think it's going to stir up a lot of debate on both sides. But we're going to talk today about uh, the issue of, first off, the stimulus package that the government is, is working on passing to get everybody $600 checks in their in their bank account or in their pockets and and increase the uh, unemployment and things like that. And then we're gonna also going to talk about the um, welfare in the community. You know, I, I have some very strong opinions in opposition of both of those. And I think Steve uh, has some pretty compelling arguments to, you know, to try to knock some of my opinions down. So I'm going to start off by um, asking Steve what it is that that he thinks about the stimulus package and, and do, does he think that it's good for America? I do think that it's good for America. The simple fact that we have people that have children that are at home more often throughout the day, that is going to increase their food bill. And they still have to maintain this household uh, to get our economy going because there's other businesses that are no longer paying in because they can't make the money that they were that they were, were making. If we can give other countries shots in the arm, North Korea, for instance, as much problems we have with them, we make sure they get fed every year. What's wrong with making sure those in your own backyard get fed? I do have a problem with people that don't pay in. And I hope this doesn't sound uncaring. If you're on Section 8 and you're getting money and you're getting money for food, we're, something that has maintained you is still being provided even through these times, times such as these. Mm -hmm. Why would I give you any more? And I'm not doing it as a punishment. The grace given or what has been given shows that I'm not that person because I, I agree with taking care of the orphan and the widow and those that are in need. But if I'm maintaining that for you already, I'm not going to throw no gravy on it. And I guess that's my point of view. If I'm taking care of you, I'm not going to give you more. But if you need assistance because you've taken a real big shot in the arm already, then, yes, I want to keep you afloat. I don't want you to sink. I want you to tread water till we can get back on track. I'm helping one group tread water, but I'm now not going to push you above somebody who's truly treading water. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. All right, well... The way I look at the um, stimulus package, you know, you, you, you said something about, you know, treading, you know, helping people that are treading water. OK. And now I agree with that. Don't get me wrong. I agree that that people that have been, you know, have lost their jobs due to this pandemic that have um, reduced hours that, that, that mm -hmm. have yeah reduced hours. You know, I, I fully understand that the government does need to step in. And, and and assist them in, 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 in financially getting through and health wise getting through this pandemic. But there's so many people out here that that didn't lose any money. You know, I, I mean the job the company that both that I worked for and that you still work at, they actually increased your income for for a, a, a period of time during they this did. pandemic. And they, did. They, they increased it twenty percent. You got a twenty percent raise and that's pretty drastic. So so that that's one of the things and, and I still don't understand this whole concept of how giving people cash money, you know, to, to, you know, during this pandemic actually helps them. 
I mean, yeah, it, it, it might help them go out and buy the little things that they that they desire to buy. Because on Facebook, I'm seeing all these people talking about how, you know, they I mean, people that have never, like you said, never contributed anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know a lot of people, a lot of my family members included, that haven't worked a, a, a steady job for six months okay. in their life. So my thing is, is, you know, how why does my tax dollars need to go to supplementing someone that, that, that has not lost any money for one thing and people that that have not have never contributed to the system. You know, why why should I pay taxes to, to, to assist in that? Now I personally have a program that I've th I thought of that will um will I think meet the meet the the needs of people. You know, I, I came I, I devised a little program that I was like, you know what? Instead of giving people cash money, why don't they just assign all Americans like a PIN number, okay? So, or, or send everybody a card. But sign, assign everyone a PIN number and, and have it set up to, to, to work on all the computer systems and registers at all the stores in the country. And what you do is you, and, and it, it, would take a, it would take a little bit to do this, but I think it would still be beneficial in the long run. So what you do is instead of sending people cash money, you know, you 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 are allow you, you're you're able to to meet their needs directly with, without without have and, and still have some kind of control on, on where the money's being spent. Let me give you an example of, of, of a I'm going to give you a family example of how this would save the government billions and billions of dollars. OK, we're going to look at, a, say, a family of five. You got two adults and three children. Now, and with the first stimulus package that came out, they sent each one of those adults got a $1,200 check to start the stimulus, right? So that's $2,400. And then each, each one of the kids, got how much did they send each kid? $500 or $600? Bucks? I think um, it was five. I believe now it's $600 per, per family member under 18. Okay. So under no, but, a certain but, 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 age. Okay. Well, even, okay, even $600 per family member. So in this, even if we go with the $600 that they sent, to each adult plus 600 you know so you're looking at a family of five getting 3, 12 plus 18 they get three thousand dollar a three thousand dollar check to start this off right and then you know if, if they're on it if they're getting unemployment they're gonna they're gonna continue to get three hundred dollars a month each each adult get three hundred dollars a month in unemployment costs i mean three hundred dollars a week, week. so that's six hundred a, a week well, that's twelve hundred each, so twenty four hundred dollars between the two of them. So this family got a th a three thousand dollar kicker, and then twenty four hundred dollars a month. Now, what if they came up with a with a program that says, okay, you know, because I see this pandemic, I see the government is having a responsibility to help people survive, feed people, keep them in their houses, you know. But I don't see it as a way for people to be able to go out and spend money, buy new TVs, new shoes, or whatever they want to do. So say, so say you um. The, the government figures out, okay, well, for an adult, we'll, we'll, we'll allow, just, I'm just throwing out figures. I mean, this is something that, that the USDA and other places would have to figure out. We'll say for each adult, we're, we're, we're going to give them $75 a week. And that would cover food and other household necessities, cleaning supplies, toiletries, or whatever else they need. And then, so that's $150 per week for the two adults. And then each kid, we'll just say $50 a week for each one of them. So you're talking about sending this family three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars a month for um, or three. I'm sorry, three hundred dollars a week, twelve hundred dollars a month to, to, to help them get by. Right. And then what you do is you is you have a, an, a, an app or something where, where people can can go and they can they can have their landlord. They can send the send the, the government a, a, a lease. And say, hey, this is what, I, what what I'm expected to pay in rent. They can they can provide their utility bills to have their utility bills um, paid so that they don't so that they don't have to, uh, you know, live in darkness. So say, you know, I mean, so when you figure it all out, I, when I did the numbers on this thing, I had it so that it looked like the government could probably save fifteen hundred dollars or so per family, like per family in this example. That, that okay. it, but I don't, I don't, a month. OK, I'm not seeing no bunch of food in there. Because the, the I mean, because included in this. Okay, well then you're talking about rent. I mean, man, no. what are they eating? Ramen? No, I, well you you don't think that three hundred dollars a you don't think that three hundred dollars a week is enough 
I mean, they, they ain't going to eat filet I, mignon. I guess I, I guess I don't understand the math, and I would like to go back to the stimulus instead of the no, ideal. No, no, no. But what I'm trying to say, though, Steve, is is, is everybody's always looking at, at, at some some free money, and, and, and I don't know that this country can afford to continue paying this bill because what's going to happen, man, as soon as, as – soon as, and, and I want everyone to know, I'm a staunch Democrat. I, I will never vote any other way, but – but I, I'm, I don't agree with the approach that the Democrats are taking when it comes to this stimulus. And the reason I don't agree with it is because what, what they're doing is we're putting this country in debt for the next 100 years. You know, by, by, by just giving everybody money. Because Joe Biden has already said, this, we, you know, the stimulus packages we're talking about, are, we, we, they have to be much larger. So eventually all these people that are getting this, this stimulus money, they're, gonna, they're, they're not paying their rent with it. See, what I'm talking about is something that gives direct payment to people's bills. Because what's going to happen is once they lift this rent, this eviction moratorium, you're going to have millions and millions of people across this country that are going to say, hey, now what? I'm getting ready to get evicted out of my house. I got a $1,200 a month rent that, that, that I have to pay. I haven't paid in seven months because you guys told me I didn't have to pay my rent. So now I'm $10,000 in the hole on rent. I need some help. So what's going to happen when these millions of people, because you know they're not going to just let millions of people go homeless. What's going to happen when, uh, when millions of people are all of a sudden standing in line saying, hey, where am I supposed to go now? You know what's going to happen, Steve? The government's going to say we need, we need, we need a, a rent stimulus. So all these people that did the right thing and paid their rent and did all of this, they're going to be, they're going to be left out in the cold on that because... They're only going to take care of the people that, that were irresponsible in the, in the, from the beginning. Now, I understand some people did lose their jobs, but, but I, I remember the federal government was giving everyone $600 a week for unemployment. So that's $2,400 a month plus your state's unemployment. So if you weren't paying your rent or paying for your place to live, why should I, once again, why should I as a taxpayer have that burden of, of, of bailing you out? First off, I'm going to say that's the anomaly and not the norm. I would hate to paint. I put, I put this situation on, you know, on the, on the disease I have. I'm a diabetic, man. But I'm not going to make everybody take insulin. Okay? okay. Yes, of course. See, a few of us need to be diagnosed figured out what what it is the cancer and cut that out but i can't let i'll throw, throw a figure out there i can't let 20 percent of the people kill off the other 80 any assistance that i'm willing to give them see i'm not going to take this 20 percent and and just crush it all I'm going to look at the 20% as a hangnail. There's no need to cut the whole hand off. See, this is where you have people that are part of the system that we call social workers that sit around and take long lunches, man, and just push paper and don't do the job. And we know who they are. Mm -hmm. See, could that be a part of that 20% not being taken care of? Because you got 40% over here to think the job is just showing up, punching in, sitting down, checking out. Or are they applying the job and checking on it? See, and I know there are those that do, but well, there are those that don't. As far as the 20% I got, that didn't come from taxpayers. See, that came from the company that I helped make hundreds of millions of for. And they thought it was worthy to give that to their employees, man, because the job that I hold in the office that I hold in the company that I hold it for, we are essential employees to uh, to moving information and managing information for the government. So they decided to do that. And yes, I did get the stimulus check when it come when it came in. From my past conversations, you already know how I felt. And you have a good idea of what I did with some of that money yeah. because you know how I am. You know what I mean? I, you know, when you're blessed, you become a blessing to others. He'll put something in your hands so you can put something in somebody else's. And this ain't about, you know, righteous Steve, you know, left hand telling what the right hand's doing or anything like that. It's about. Thank you, Lord. I've been blessed. Anything that you put into my hands, into my life that I can share with others, 
I am to do that. I want to walk in your purpose and not my preference. My preference would have been out and and flip, flipped over my wardrobe. You know I love shoes, Dad. Mm-hmm. I'd have got a shoe rack and loaded up with shoes. Love them. But that's not what I did with the money. And I don't want, just like other things that are going on in our community, as well as just around the stimulus check, around welfare, around the police department, around government, local government. No, those things don't need to be just uplifted and scrapped, man. But we need to pay closer attention and have our hands in on the restructuring. I can't have somebody who lives in a third-tier suburb deciding what's comfortable and good for me here in the inner city. And we got to get to the table. Well, I understand that, Steve. Yeah, okay. but, but you know what? The person in the third tier suburb is paying into a. If you're relying on the government, they do have something to say with what you do with their money. They do. I mean, whether whether we whether we not now, if you if you want to be in, self sufficient, you can make decisions based on whatever it is that you want. But when you're asking me or or someone that lives a hundred miles from from here. To, 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 to pay into a system that allows you to live off of my work? Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I definitely believe that, that, that I have something to say with, with about how, how you're using my money. Right. And when you come in here and, 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 and get the money in here and don't employ me or give me floor um, blood because remember this is commute into the city to get my money and run it back out here. I and agree. And I, right. I got okay, with that being said, <laughs> with that being said, when you come here and get fat, you must leave crumbs. You oh. must, especially when you say no job, no promotion, Peter Principal, somebody into the mail room only. Well, let me ask you this. Well, come you, on, man. Where do you think there's where do you think the limitation of government responsibility is? Ends. Is, is there a limit or does the government just have this purse that's wide open for everybody no, to just reach in and the, take what the they want? The government is not a cash cow, but you want to take the time to build your society up and keep everybody as a contributor. That's what you want. You it's don't what, you don't want to be like some countries in third worlds or dictatorships right there where everybody's poor, where you got 80 percent of your people are poor. and You got 90 or 20 uh, percent uh, that are sitting up here fat and healthy, man. That's not a good society. I don't think anybody wants that kind of society. OK, but there's many countries out there that are like that. And then we turn around and help them countries. That stuff that could be money that could be spent right here. See, you're talking about what we're dealing. What if we trim the military budget, man? Because there's no sense of building a bunch of guns and grenades when somebody's too hungry and weak to throw the doggone thing or pick up the gun and aim it and shoot it because they, they're that. so hungry that they're shaking. But how, how about we just trim the, the, the federal government so that people can keep more a little bit more money in their pockets? How about we just trim everything? Well, See, the only, and, 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 and I agree because you look at it, you got the, for me, it's, it's the politicians and the people that are sitting on the uh, executive boards, man. Those are the only people that are really keeping up with the cost of living. Because, you know, when you're you talking know, about. See, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the government people that don't show up for bills and stuff that are going on, man, that are making, making six figures. Well, well, sitting and, around are supposed to be doing what we want but they're doing what they want and then they're supporting garbage when they're in politics see theirs were some fat seeing them per diems well, and stuff man all them lunches and dinners and travel and stuff see nobody's thinking about that see how about this being trimmed well the like, same way them put it like this here the same way everybody gets mad at clergy be, like, like, like Joel Osteen getting a four point four million dollar. Okay, and like stimulus. everybody, everybody getting mad at clergy. Don't forget about the government fi- officials that are still getting paid their regular well, rate, you, and their families you know the and their you know families the getting Osteen? millions too. You know, and, well, and people, people, support, people talk about not the clergy, and I'm not supporting Joel Osteen. I'm just saying, don't forget how fat Mitch McConnell's wife got. Well, the thing is, is Mitch McConnell's wife probably pays taxes. The clergy don't pay taxes. Well, they don't. They don't surprised. pay no taxes. They're, you know, they find mm-hmm. every. They, they. That's why they vote. They continue to vote the way they vote because they. They want to keep 
from paying taxes. How does someone like 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 Joel Osteen get a four point four million dollar check? You know what? I don't. I'm and his church doesn't do. pay any taxes I don't know to this anything. government. Man. Yeah, I put it like this here. I never went into old Joel Osteen. I understand business. that, but but I he never went into none of that, man. I never looked at it. I never looked into it. Well, I never looked into it. I just thought both incidents for Mitch McConnell's wife. And Joe well, I mean, you got, well, I thought both of them were egregious. Well, well you're but right. I hear, I hear people talking about the one side, and then there's another side here where people are doing absolutely nothing for you. I, I agree, Steve. If you think that I don't under, that I, that I support anything that has Mitch McConnell tied to it, I don't. You know, the thing is, but Mitch McConnell's wife comes from a very wealthy family, so she right. she had money and long before all of that. I'll put it like this: you there know. were some companies out there that had big money coming back. And they refused it. Well, and and I respect that. Okay, but but but, so but my I. thing is is see I want to I want to stick on the stimulus thing, man. Because like I said, I, I mean, for me personally, man, I am I am I'm so I'm so sick and tired of people celebrating the stimulus thing, and they don't even realize, man. See, they they send all this like there's there's what is this a nine hundred billion dollar stimulus package they just did. If you take the little six hundred dollars that they're sending to every single American in this country, I don't think and multiply and, and, and multiply. I don't think every single American is getting it, huh? I don't think every. Well, single. of course they're not. Of course oh, they're not. Okay. But even if you say three hundred million or two hundred million, say you say two hundred million Americans are getting this six hundred dollars, you know what does that what does that total? You know, it it, it, it totals such a small percentage of this nine hundred billion dollars that. That, that you and I as taxpayers are going to be paying for the rest of our lives and our kids are going to be paying. So what they're doing is they're, they're dropping you little trinkets so that you can keep your eyes focused on the little shiny $600 deposit you got put into your account while they give the rich people and, these, and everybody else all of this money. You know, and then what's funny is even on top of that, they know. Then, then that's probably what your problem no, is. No, if you're no. saying rich people getting all the money, maybe that's where the problem is. No, my problem is with the it, whole it, thing. It, it's the greed. It's the, it's, the, it's the greed that's going on. My problem is with the government. It, with the, the government. reaching and the greediness, man, that's going on. It is not the help itself. You is can that help what people. I'm no, no, from you? no. You're not hearing that. But you can help people without giving them cash money. You can help people by just meeting their needs in other ways. I don't have any problem. Like, like you, Steve. There are people out there. For one thing, you don't help somebody that doesn't need help. You, I don't, I, I don't believe that that the government has a responsibility to help you get send you a check. Because just because you happen to be in this country, send you a check and you haven't lost. I mean, your, your lifestyle hasn't hasn't been adjusted at all. I mean, are they paying people because of the inconvenience of being of not being able to go to restaurants or having to wear a mask? I don't understand it. But, but, but you know, if you if you come and say, hey, I, I don't have a job, so I need check, unemployment. It says it's a stimulus check. So what it's is to okay, help, exactly. it's to help stimulate the economy. OK. And that, I mean, see, that's it, getting it, to it, my it, point. OK. And it helps stimulate the economy. Some of that money is intended to be spent so you can have the small, you know, store front that's open. Anybody who's capable of paying their rent, I would like to think that they're paying their rent. I'm not going to buy once again all in all these people. There's a percentage of people that are that ignorant, whether the pandemic's going on or not. They were not paying their rent before then. <laughs> and you know that. I hear you. You had rental property. <laughs> That's <laughs> why well, I see I can't I understand why you would sit there and say that We know there's going to be a percentage of people man And I'm not going to turn that Small percentage Or whatever the percentage is It is into the big Boogeyman See I just you know, see, I see things opposite I'm not going to turn you. it into the boogeyman See I think 20% of the people Are, are responsible in the, in, with that and eighty percent of them are, are you know, are, are, are irresponsible. But, okay, but we, that, know, that's we, know, we that's, know, we know from the stats that we looked up, and we're gonna tie this well, in. We're gonna tie this in. This stat here that had to do with welfare, we're gonna tie it into this stimulus. Okay, okay? well let, let, let's go. On, let's go into that. that. It says there's like a okay in welfare between before seven months, twenty percent. I think it is fifteen percent of the people. Twenty percent of the people are off welfare in the first seven months. Mm-hmm. There's only 20% that stay on over five years. Okay. 
with that being said, you and I both agree that there should be a limit on how much welfare should be given. 80% of the people meet that criteria. They're responsible enough, especially in the state that we live in, that there, there's employment, Steve. there's decent pay, hold up, decent pay, and they're able to get off welfare. See, but you want to take that 19.5% and you want to broad brush the other 80% that are doing well. That's that same got a hangnail, let me cut off my hand mentality. What do you do when you turn your back on all those people? What type of society are you trying to have when you do that? Well, the way I look at it, Steve, is, is no. I, do I believe that, 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 you know, no one should ever get any government help? No, I don't believe Sound that. Sound like it. No, what I, what, I do, what I do believe, what I do believe, Steve, is people make choices. See, now you, you keep coming up with these. No, you keep coming up with these stats. 20%, only 20% of the people. No, I, I, do my homework. I, no, I understand that. But, but see, poll questions are always, they, they're always dry, driven in, in the direction of the person that's asking the question. So you can ask a question. Okay, this is data. No, I, no, I understand data. that. But you can, ask, poll questions, that was data. you can ask a question, Steve, and, 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 and have, your, have the answer steered in any direction you want. My thing is, is, is even 20%, that means one in five. One in five people utilize the, 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 the government for five. I mean, I ain't saying you to see because you and that doesn't that doesn't break the whole welfare thing down. See, because to me, food stamps is welfare to me, food stamps to me, medical assistance. That's welfare. You know, tuition assistance that, that, that I mean, you know, all of all of this stuff, Steve, is, is, you know, is, is the government supplementing your lifestyle. And what I'm saying is, you you know, is I don't understand how anyone can think that 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 this government owes you something without you owing something back. You know, I don't know why the, the like, why, that, why have people keep paying in if they can't get nothing out? Well, a lot of the okay. I, I, see you. Well, why didn't you bring a stat showing that how many people that are on welfare actually actually have 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 that doesn't show that. No, no, no. What I'm saying is we're gonna get here, man. When we talk about welfare spending, know that more than sixty percent of it goes on Medicaid. Well, and Steve, Medicaid you know is what that, for people with limited resources. See, you are gonna mm -mm, stop? That's not true. That's, that's not no. Medicaid, okay, Steve. Listen, listen, Steve. Listen, people okay. that were billions. Okay. People that were multi million. No, one, let me just make one point. I promise. You gotta people, let me finish making a point, man, because I let you run for a while. Go man. ahead, man. I'm gonna let I'm you make you your point, man. Right. You know, <laughs> over sixty percent of this is Medicaid. Okay. Sixty percent, man. This is where that affordable health care thing comes into play. Man. It does. Because what's really happened with our welfare dollar, man, is they keep prescribing $100 doses of aspirin, man, giving them $5,000 bed pans. I agree. Pans. I'm 100% okay, with when you. When we stop using poverty as an at-profit industry, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is letting you know too many money is getting kicked to pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. You get an ace bandage that's $500. See, that type of gouging needs to stop because I'm writing a check that I've boasted up in order to charge the government to take your tax dollars. See, that's, that's the fat cat getting fatter. But you want to talk about this person that's in need, that's having trouble wiping their nose and the rear end. <laughs> that don't no, make I'm sense to me about if you don't want to attack that. All right. That, I think, is a more realer conversation to where's my money going. Well, can I, can I respond to that? No. No, Clay, go ahead. <laughs> no. Steve, for one thing, the vast majority of medical Medicaid payments go to nursing homes. So so and now now in, in, in senior citizens, those are people that, that have worked their life, they've paid taxes. And some of and, them and, and, never and, and, and because the reality is, is 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 I mean, if you look at that percentage, I'd be willing to bet you ninety percent of it's going to going to nurse you in the nursing oh. homes across this country. How can it how can it be ninety percent of it going to nursing home when most of us, if we're lucky, we have one grandparent that's in there, okay? Mm-hmm. 
but but okay, all right. They're full. Okay. Nursing homes are full. They don't have a problem it, 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 keeping yeah, them keeping them rooms full. full. They're full, but they don't stay full long, right? They got because well, because one person passes they away and another person's right. waiting they at the door a, to get they in. They have a high turnover. With that being said, man, the one grandparent just had six or eight great grandkids, okay. okay, or grandkids, and if they're on the system, we hope that they're not. But if they're on the system. Or even if they got a job, they probably got some supplemental insurance that's going to go into that as well. Well, and, okay, come on now. Yeah, but let's go now. Look at the whole picture, no, man. Because no. you got these Steve. kids. Remember, we just talked about vaccines. Because those vaccines have to be paid for. See, I so got I got go a little school. bit of knowledge on on this medical assistance uh, stuff. Okay. See, for uh, one thing, right. for one thing, it, you know, when it comes to when it comes to doctors and nursing homes and hospitals charging medical assistance, it doesn't matter what they put on the paper for the bill. Medical assistant says, this is what we pay for that service. Okay, so that that part doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they charge medical assistance. Medical assistance has a stand has a rate that they say for this specific this specific service. This is our maximum. This is what you're going to get. You know, now they, they do make it. They do take advantage of the other insurances. And I and what you were talking about as far as a single uh, payer health care system, I'm 100 percent in in in. in in uh, support of that but what i also realize about the about the healthcare system steve is a lot of the people that are on medicaid that aren't nursing home eligible that are younger people that 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 you know that just don't work and and, and they're on medical assistance those people are, are are getting the best health insurance in the country and not paying for it see so what you're a, a single health a single payer health care system steve requires them to have some skin in the game and they don't want mm -hmm. that those people don't if, if they say hey you know what we're going to take 20 dollars out of your welfare check to pay for your medical assistance or your medical okay. they're gonna they're gonna complain about that the aclu will come out and say hey that's not fair you're making you're, you're, you're taking a poor person and make them poor by making them pay for their health insurance see i'm a person steve as much as people can get mad and and and, and have their opinion of, of what i'm what i'm saying I don't care, but I'm the kind, I'm a person that believes I take care of people that take care of themselves. I take care of people that have skin in the game. I don't care if you're my child or whoever you are. If you if you want to reap the benefit from things, you put something in the system. You know, I don't want people that, that just constantly come up. They want to take a drink out of the fountain, but don't pay a water bill. You know, I, I, and I'm not saying that. And, okay, and, address the people. Stop broad brushing. I'm everybody. not broad. No. That's what it sounds like, Dak. It's, it's like I want to help the people that can help themselves. Okay, if you can no, help not yourself. that help themselves, that contribute. Okay, some people, okay. some people are going to fall short trying to help themselves. Okay, and then there's some people, man, that have trouble getting their hand on the wrong man. And okay. it, and it sounds like you know. Okay, I'm gonna ask you this: What do you plan on doing with those people that you don't want to help? That you don't think well, deserves it. What happens? Well, Steve, what I, what do you, what happens to them? Well, what I, are you going to do well, with them? Where are you going to place you keep them? Keep asking happens? me, man. <laughs> but I because I want a real answer. Well, I, the thing is, Steve, is, is is not the thing is what happens. I, I guess that that's up to, up to them to decide how they want their life to go, bro. I mean, seriously, I don't at this. You know, Steve, I, the problem is, man, is is we have a developed a mentality in this country, man, where 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 we are so busy. Trying to save people that don't want to save themselves, man. If you're somebody, like you just used the term, they don't have their hand on the wrong, or whatever it is, right? They can't get their hand on the wrong. Okay, so so Steve, my thing is, is somebody that refuses to, to, to touch that wrong, or do do we do we just not till the field? Do we not get the field ready? Or do we or do we move along without them? I'm not a person, I don't, I don't have time in my life. To sit there and save somebody that's drowning, that don't want to grab the, the don't want to grab the buoy that I throw to him, Steve. I don't. Now, if you're somebody that's okay, we we all have had times in our lives right, where we've been down on our beginning, luck. That's the beginning of weeding out and finding those who those people are that amongst that twenty percent that I talked about. See, you've got to throw the buoy out. That's Before right. here, you didn't sound like I don't want to do nothing. I have you know, I don't, not, that's I don't, not what I said, Steve. Okay, okay, it's not what you said, but this is what it's sounding like. Why should I? That's right. Contribute. Do, contribute to anybody? Why should they have my tax dollars? And it sounded at that point that it was a broad brush, man. To me, 
Steve. Now, my thing is getting it narrowed down to, yes, there's some bad seeds. There's some bad eggs. How do we address that? Because the system can't go away. Why can't it? It can't go away. What do you do with the people? Well, Steve, I just I think that there's ways that even somebody like that I can I got an answer for that. I think that somebody that's totally dependent on the government they can do things for their community, Steve. They can do no, things for their community. They can they can do things to help okay. as long as see when I say a contributor, have you heard me use that word today, a contributor? Yes, indeed. Okay, see, contributing doesn't necessarily mean that you that you are going to a nine to five job. I think when I talk about, when I use the term contributing, I, I'm talking about people that contribute to the well-being of, the, of this country, of this planet. And you I know, so, so what I'm saying is, yeah, if you, if you want my tax dollars to go to, to feeding your children. I agree. I agree. And I agree to this extent, Dak. I agree that the people that I'm paying now. That there's no reason why they can't give me 10 hours of work. Exactly. Especially if your child is, is at school. And if you're sitting around playing cards or playing video games while your child is at school, you can come down to the park and paint, pick up, clean up. Well, you can be part of the community service well, team because the community is paying you. Now, I think there's a way to help build work ethic. I think there's a way to contribute. You know what I'm saying? And this is the modifications that I'm talking about. When I say don't scrap the system, but restructure the system. Well, see, because if I'm throwing money at something, my community should be able to get something out of it. Now, I don't care if you go, you know, clean up at the abandoned houses. Uh, go take care of the elderly, the old folks that are on the block. You know, right. people that have signed up with the with the city or the county or the state that get on the list that if these people are going to take our tax dollars, they're going to keep our elderly better. They're going to take better care of our communities, making it look better. We're going to have daycares that look better. And they could be probably municipal daycares. I have no problem with but, anything but you're this saying. Is, but this is how I say contribute. I just don't say what I'm not going to do. You What's know, but there I have an ideal. I have a problem with the people that are sitting around soaking up money. As they say, sucking up food and heat. I got a problem with that. And sleep so all day. So it sounds day. like you, you agree I got a with problem what I'm with the, No, but see, for you, it's like I can only throw a buoy. I got a creative system that floats. Because I can't throw you a buoy if I can't pull you in your doggone boat. Well, the boy, that's what the buoy is supposed to do. Is right, the boat, the buoy just keeps you there for a while, keeps your head above the water. But I got to get you in the boat. See, I got to create other sailors. Well, see, and, other people got to be on the top side. Because I need you, I need you to at least help kick your feet to help me pull you in the okay. boat. Okay, yeah, I can't gonna pull do all your weight. Yeah, but some of those people, man, they're gonna be on their life, on their last breath. They've been under for so long, they got water in their lungs. You might have to go ahead and pump water from the stomach and resuscitate them. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say. That this man's life's worth it, and that one's not. Well, I'm not going to say know. that either. It ain't, it ain't for me know. to decide that, Okay, Steve. that's why I have to create the system that once I pull you towards me and up into the boat, man, and you choose not to stay in the boat at that point, then it's easier for me to move on. But if I haven't created the system or been part of a system that's tried to help you get you to that point, and I just want to cut you off before I put the effort in, well... That's just not cool to me. I'm gonna tell you a story, man. Back, you know. Tell me the truth this time. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you. See, this is. I, I think this kind of helped form my opinion on welfare. Okay, I, when I was about 19 years old, and I was in the military, and I came home from for leave one mm -hmm. one week, you know, and you know. When you were on when you were uh, on leave, they'd give you a, a leave packet, and you'd you know your check would be in there, and you know you'd have to wait till a certain day. You go cash your check, but back in those days, you could just go to like Target or something and cash your checks, right? So I, I was standing in line because it happened to be the same day everybody got their their welfare checks. Mother's Day, huh? Yeah, Mother's Day, <laughs> you know. So because the military pays on the first or the first and the fifteenth, right? So I was standing in line, and there was these two young girls in front of me and you know and they had one of the girls had like a little 3 4 year old little boy with her and 
they were sitting up there in line talking about girl when we get our checks we're gonna go ahead we're gonna go straight and get our hair done we're gonna do this we're gonna go kick it tonight we're going to the club this and that and and the little boy was tugging on his mom's uh, pants like mom can I have an ice cream cone can I have an ice cream cone she was he was talking to her and trying to get her attention she just kept running her mouth so then she looks down at him and was like boy I ain't got no damn money for no ice get it out of my face with talking about some ice cream mm -hmm. now she done sat there for 10 minutes bragging about how she was getting ready to get her hair done what her nails do done but she was yeah but she was going to the club that night too you know so I look at her and I and I and I tell her I said you know what you're a pathetic example of a mother you are. You're sorry. You know, and I, so I told her, I said, I told her son, I said, come on, man, let's go get you. I'll buy you an ice cream cone. Now, here I am, a 19-year-old young man. You know, probably, I think I probably had, I don't even think I had my own son at that point. I don't think he, he was even born yet. You know, so I, um, you know, I took him over there, man, and bought him a little ice cream cone. And, and the whole time I'm standing back in line, man, she's sitting there. You, you, man, who the hell? You know, just, just talking crap to me. Mm -hmm. See, so, so that, and I'm not, and don't get me wrong, man. I know that there are people that have advanced their lives and, and become very productive members of society with that, with that little bit of help. You know, I understand that. And so don't get me wrong that, that I don't believe that, that welfare is, 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 is completely a waste. But when I see, when I see examples of stuff like that, man, I can't help, but that, that can't help but taint me for life. And, oh. and, 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 I, and, and it's not just that I've seen people close to me all these years, man. I mean, I have people in my circle, Steve, that are three, four generations deep welfare where they have I, I can't remember like i said before i can't remember where where they where any of them had six months of straight meaningful employment and, and these are people in their 50s 60s 70s years and, and and so i'm sitting there like you know the welfare system literally pays people to be poor and you and we buy right into it we we buy into this as long as i get just enough to make it by you know I'm, you know, I'm okay with that. There, there, there's, there are people, Dak, I'm not going to sit up there and say there's not people that aren't career career welfare recipients. You got career criminals. You got people who invest themselves or their lives into stupid things that are non-productive. You know, they got the cat that keeps going back and forth to jail. You know what I'm saying? About the young lady, I'm sorry she painted such an ugly picture of herself, man, that you made that portrait about everybody that happens to be on welfare. I, no, I don't oh, have, oh, okay, all right. You, I don't I, have but everybody you, in that portrait. I, I, I know you don't have everybody, man, but you used an example of a person to talk about this situation that we're talking about. That's right. So I'm sorry that, you know, the horrible picture that she painted, it transferred itself to a greater thing. Now, Touching on the subject about the other people you were speaking of, man, that's something where you have to address. There's a conversation that you need to have. You know, there's some there's some sitting down. I need to talk to you, fam. What are you doing? You know, this ain't where we from. This ain't what we've but it been. Is where we from. Well, that's where you said generation there. I don't see nobody generationally from where I sit here. Well, okay, so with that being said, man, fam. This ain't where we from. Y'all sharing the same DNA. This is not where we from. And maybe he needs or he or she needs to have that conversation. Because the conversation right now is playing its uh playing out into it's making them crawl into that defensive turtle shell of that situation. And you're gonna have to get them out of that shell and it's going to be some conversation see they right. see how working has worked for you working works that's why i work well and once they see that see I, at some point in time you got to be tired of waiting for the first or the 15th yeah. at some point in time man i work and sometimes I get sick and tired of waiting on payday. Well, you know what I'm saying? It's it's individuals. You don't let individuals. And I say this because growing up as a black man, 
something can happen on the news. And as a kid, we'd hold our breath. Hope it wasn't, hope it wasn't black. Hope it wasn't mm. black. Hope it wasn't black. Oh, man, he's black. Society looked at you, and you could feel a certain tension. Man, I didn't commit the crime. But because I look like the person that perpetrated the crime, crime I must feel their heat unjustly and that's kind of what i'm saying about these people there are people out there that are in genuine need of help and we can't let the few that are abusive and unappreciative and haughty with the help that they receive i can't let them few. Right, you keep stressing on that few man it ain't a few, a few Steve. okay okay few, well man. let me save the two dak you can have the 98 <laughs> that's wrong man and i don't believe no. it's that high I don't believe it's I don't believe it's as much as you say. Well, it is. like I said, Steve, you keep you always reference, you know, where we grew up over north, man. You can you can ride up and down Broadway, you can ride up and down a few streets over north, Steve, and you and you see exactly what I see, bro. You same go to, family, you go to, you same, go to the same grocery family store, still there. You go to the grocery store, man. These people are standing out in the in the parking lot trying to sell their food stamps that was given to them by the taxpayers of this country. For them to feed their children. Okay, how many, how many were standing out front selling food stamps? An honest figure. How many did you actually see? I, I literally, and I'm, I'm going to be real, Steve. Okay. I, I don't, you know, and how I'm not going to, and, and I'm not going to lie and say that I haven't actually taken advantage of it sometimes. Okay, but I, but I have, I, I can guarantee you that how at least one out of see? two, one out of two times that I have, they don't, Steve, one out of two times that I have gone to that store on Broadway. One out of two. One out of two. Every other time I have been approached and asked if I want to buy stamps. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. so, so I'm I not saying, it, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, man. Steve, no, I, man. no, it, it has happened and, and it happened. Oh, the man, last time I went there, it man, happened. Tell me about it, man. From the days of the funny colored money, man, the pink, dollar bills, right. the brown bills, the green bills, the blue bills. I mean, yeah, we, we know what growing up in the neighborhood does. No. But, so, and, you know, we've all been there, but out of all them people that was coming in and out. Of the grocery store. Mm-hmm. And probably a great deal of them okay. using food stamps, right? A, a, a great deal of them. You're yeah. going to let them one or two people paint the picture for the whole thing. That's what I keep saying. The few Steve, are being broad brushed. Steve, uh, like I said, no. Are, are broad brushing the you, many. I, I understand what so you're saying. So that's why that's where I keep saying the picture you draw is with too broad a brush. And I think if we thin the brush some, then we cannot start narrowing in on the conversation that needs to be had within the group of Steve, Steve I have. talk to people all the time. I don't I don't say that everybody. I've known people, Steve, that have been very, very responsible with with the with with the help that that, that they needed. You know, see, but my thing is, man, is I, I'm sick and tired of people talking about, well, I'm a I was a single mother and that's why I had to get help. I was a, because I look at it like this, Steve. You knew that there was a good chance that you were going to be a single mother when you laid down with that bum that you decided to have that child with. See, you know, it's like people. It, it, see, right. to me, to You're me, no, no, right. no. To me, it goes to choices, Steve. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't sit here and, and 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 complain about the fact that your dad, your baby's daddy, ain't in in your kid's life. Your baby's daddy don't pay child support. Your baby's daddy don't do this. Your baby's daddy got nine other kids mm-hmm. that he that that he's got. You can't you can't complain about that I can't when you argue know that. that when you laid down with him she did you knew who he was you knew who he was she, she did did you know what What's here that? comes one of them mommaisms you know what she used to tell me what's that she'd say hey punk man if you lay down and have a baby man be twice as much man when you stand up when you pull your pants up be twice as much man as you was when you laid down that's right okay so it's a 50 50 thing see what well, I'm not going to blame it all on her throw it all on her for laying on her back. I agree, where you Steve. got the, where you got the slick gifted tongue, man. Somebody shooting gift in her ear, man. At the right time, we don't know what's going on, well, and they both. That's that rush thing we talked about just earlier. You know, we just talked about this last show. See, it's some of those decision makers that are in, that comes into into this thing, man. It takes two. It does. You know Steve, what I'm I, saying? Believe me, I'm so not instead give... instead of me being so hard on her, because he's just as much at fault. 
See, we're expecting her to stand up now I with the conversation you. that you have. But you know to be a mean? woman, I needed this help. It was like, girl, will you lay down? Get up and get a job. Take care of the baby. Get off welfare. This, that, and other thing. Punk, where are you? Well, the thing is, man, um, you know, it does. a man is going, you know, and I, don't get me wrong, Steve. I'm, I'm not, about I'm, to, it sounds I'm, like. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to make excuses for, for anybody. But if, 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 a, if a bum has an opportunity to, 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 to do something, he's going to take that opportunity. It's your responsibility to identify the bum because at the end of the day, no, Steve, it is your resp- These women know what they did. They know what they're dealing with. They Why? Do- it seems like you're putting all the weight on no, her. No, I'm not. Well, I'm putting the most of it on her because she's going to be the one responsible for the, she's going to deal with the ramifications of this, of this encounter that she has with this bum, right? So she's going to be the one that's taking care of it. And then she's going to come and look at me and say, Hey, uh, Mr. Whitfield, Hey Dak. I Man, I need some help paying for my paying to feed my kids. Well, baby, hey, Dak, I said, need well, some maybe, medical insurance well, for my Maybe kids. this is where we turn it up. Let's go back to Jack, who's the daddy, and not Dak. You know what I'm saying? Because but Dak, but Jack don't have no job. Okay, you know what, Jack, you're going to have a job. You are now going to but work. You just said you're, hold up, they don't give the black uh, man hold, a job. Hold up, now, Jack, you get to contribute. <laughs> Check this out, punk. You go down to the park, and clean up. And go paint. And go clean up the, uh, the neighborhood around here. Jack, contribute. I, hey, There's I no agree. sense of Dak and Steve paying for little Jack. <laughs> contribute. I, I agree, See, man. instead of painting a broad brush we was going to put on this sister, now Jack can pull up his pants See, and to, be... To, to me, so now Jack is to be twice as much man. To me, it's like you, you're... You, you, I mean, you're... Uh, do, you, do you see any responsibility on her part, though? Of course. See, because as far I as said I'm fifty fifty. As far as I'm That's con- as far as I'm concerned, these bums should be the loneliest loneliest people on the planet, Steve. Well, you he know, actually got he these, obviously he's got game. Well, you know what? That does, I don't right. I, which put both you, of them in a situation you, where they both got to grind. If you fall for the game, that's on you. Mm-hmm. But I am. I'm Jack you know, failed too. I, I became a single I became a single dad at, at 21 years old, okay? Why? Right. You know, I became a single dad. Right. And you know what, Steve? I never thought that my my option was to go downtown and apply and have the government. I was 21 years old, just got out of the military, came home, had had absolutely nothing. Didn't have a job. All I had was a little 1985 Toyota Corolla. That was all I had to my name. And you know what, Steve? The day I get home, I go find me. I, I start looking for jobs, go to the unemployment, not, not unemployment office, but go to the workforce services, mm-hmm. trying to have them help me find a job. Mm-hmm. I was working within a week and a half. See, right. the problem is is people have, have, have grown so accustomed to looking at the government as their as their first resort, they're, 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 you know, this is where I, you know, I don't know where to go, so I have to go and ask the government for help. I mean, I got, I know people, Steve, that they get pregnant, and and, and as soon as they get pregnant, the first thing they do is go down and and, and, and start and start applying. Now, if medical assistance, I understand. You know what? I don't I don't want children being born without proper, you know, with, with the mother prenatal not being care. properly, yeah, having proper prenatal care. I don't want that myself. But the thing is, Steve, is people have to start thinking about their own accountability and, and, and the things that they want for their lives. If, if you know that you want something good for your life, don't go out here and try to, and try to share your life with somebody that's going to just hold you back from achieving what you want to achieve. You know, it's like you got a boat motor facing the wrong way. You trying to push a boat with oars, but you got a motor that's stronger than those oars that are pulling you back the other way. If, 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 if that's what you want for your life, don't ask me for help. Don't, you know, if you, want, if you want these little scrubs standing out on the corner not doing anything to contribute to, to society, don't ask me for no help. Because all you're going to do is create another little scrub that, 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 that's, that's going to be standing on the corner in 20 years. You know, and not down... Like I said, there are people, Steve. I know I I got some examples of people that have become doctors, with the with the with, you know because they you know got pregnant at 16 years old and needed to go get help. So I'm not saying that 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 things don't work for the better. See, I see things different. You see, you you see, 80 percent of people on welfare doing the right thing. I see 80 percent doing the wrong thing. I see 20. I see the example as being 20 percent. That's where we're different. You know. You know, you I mean, I think we have the same numbers, but they're just opposite, man. 
Well, I'm just going by those numbers that are provided. It's to, all in the way the poll questions. What, okay, asked, there, man. okay. Once again, this is government data. This isn't a poll question. So it's not going into a certain neighborhood and asking a poll question. According to the data, 20% go beyond five years. Okay? That's that's what it is. It's not, so let's not reduce it to a poll question because then that makes it easy to package into a small package well, and throw it over your shoulder. Well, well, well classify are, what welfare is, Steve. Okay. Well, what part of what aspect of welfare are they I think, talking about? I, I think I think the aspect of welfare that you are talking about and have us and are upset and have a thing about is thirty five percent of what welfare is considered, and that thirty five cent percent. Is being daycare, food stamps, no, assistance it. to mothers and kids and stuff, because those are the examples that you're using. See, Steve, oh, hold I, up, hold up. Those are the examples that you keep using for welfare, and that's 35 percent of the of the wedge. Only 35 percent of the whole welfare wedge. No, that's it, not or probably I'm even a little now. bit, it's about a little bit less yeah. than that, because most of the welfare is Medicaid. I, don't, I would okay. never complain about daycare oh, assistance, and the reason okay, I wouldn't okay, do that, Steve. Okay, so what what parts are you going to talk about? Because what it talks, what it's, it's talking about is money. All these things take money. See what it is, and what I'm hearing, and what I'm starting to get a feel for is unaccountability for the young man. See, I won't get no job. And I'll lay up on other women and I'll continue to hustle because I don't want to pay child support. I don't give a doggone if you get a job or not. I'm going to hunt you behind down and you're going to put in this community service work, man, because well, that's what's going on. See, put pressure there. Watch how it change. Well, the thing is, Steve, what is the busiest day at the liquor store in the hood? Okay. What's the busiest day? Paydays. No, the first payday welfare day. You payday. go by Mickey, you go by Mickey's liquor on 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 the, uh, the day that the you know what it's the it's the busiest day of the month. It is, it is. It, I mean, paydays of course, but I but the busiest day of the month is 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 the day them checks hit those hit the hit them accounts. You it, know, and it, it, it might be Dak. No, the thing, it, it, you know well, you and you and I couldn't argue it in one way or another, man. Well, I lived about two blocks from okay, there, so I man. noticed that. Uh, yeah, okay, still. Still, Dad, what are you saying? What are you saying? You're an alcoholic. You want to hang out here. You want to have babies. You want it. What do you want to do about it? <laughs> well, you already know. I've told you what I wanted to do. I know, but it sounds like you want to cut everybody off. If they don't do it exactly the way you do it, if they're not living their well, life the way you thought it should have been lived, I don't want to help you. You just told you, well, you just said that I'm against like I, like one of my issues is daycare. See, one thing I like about the daycare subsidy program, well, you keep is, is talking that tell, about, no, but no, you keep talking about me, young women, no, but, but that the are on welfare. No, the day well because Steve, those are the people that get welfare because they're the ones left with these these children when the man when they when they when this sorry man that they had. Well, I know men. Is, no, it isn't being responsible. I know responsible. men. I can name three men off the top of my. Head that was raising their kids, man, because the sorry ass mama walked off. Well, I had a pretty, you know, to be honest with you, Steve, I, I, you know what, I raised two kids. I never got a dime from my from my kids' mothers. Okay. Never. I mean, thank I, you, you, Lord, know. you were blessed. No, no, what, no, what it is, Steve, is yeah. I, so I I understand that that aspect, but even then, I, I I don't I don't I didn't go to the government. I didn't. I didn't go to the government. But but what I was saying is, at least somebody that's on daycare assistance, Steve, they're in a, they're they're doing something. That they're, they're, that they're trying to move forward, whether it's taking classes or, 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 or maybe working part time. They're doing something. So I do believe that the daycare assistance program is a, is a necessity. But what I'm talking about is cash. I'm talking about giving people. See, I, just going, even going back to the stimulus thing. I'm against the government giving people to use. If you're going to ask the government for something, I'm against the government giving you money to use at your discretion. That's, that, that's the biggest thing for me. If you want, if, if you need things, now the government, if you, because maybe if the government d d didn't make it so easy for people, I just they, they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to stay on it so long. So what am I here? I'll pay all your bills for you. I'll put enough money on your card so you could eat, but I don't want you to have one thin dime in your pocket. You know what? When you want to have a dime in your pocket, you get your ass up and go work for it, man. Wow. That's how I feel, wow. Steve.
Yeah, I've worked my wow, whole life. Wow, because everything that you need in life, you know, it's not always going to be got with this here. You know, you need commodities and everything else, man. Well, you know what, you know, Steve? You like can't, I said, you can't cross the like, food stamp dollars, man. And I, I don't want to go to that type of I know you don't to I know that you type don't. of mentality because I don't see it as being conducive to any type of good because those ideals man have been used in the past and they did not go Steve. they did not work out well because they exploited I, they hold up they exploited the group of people let's go back to the original sense of what a workhouse was see I mean, not the workhouse as we know it now not as we know it now well, what was the see workhouse? the workhouse the, the workhouse, workhouse the workhouses they took people off the streets See, there was orphanages, there was workhouses for men, and there was workhouses for women. See, they'll put you in there, not give you a dime, and because you got room and they fed you gruel or some slop, that they kept you there. Hold up, they kept you there working, and they turned up the work. See, if you weren't in some cramped room with beds laid in a row to sleep and to get up early in the morning and work, and you go back, then they just threw you in the streets to starve, or they sent you to penal colleges that end up called penal colonies. They end up becoming it, uh, places like Australia. Is is it okay. a crime to be poor? I don't think it's a crime to well, be poor. Well, that's basically what it was. Well, see, I, I because they that. were holding those people down because they were poor, and then they exploited them for profit, just like what's happening right now. You know what, man? Like I said. You and I, we're, we're going to just have to agree to disagree. And I know a lot of people that might be listening to this is like, Dak is crazy. And this and and Steve's that. crazy. But you know, no, nah, Steve, you, you, you know how to say the right things to, you know, and that's fine. I mean, you, you, you got some, you, Steve, you got a good heart, man. But my thing is, is I am sick and tired of looking at people that don't do anything to contribute to this society that we live in and that, that, that are first in line to ask for some help. My thing is, is no, if maybe that would be an incentive. If, they, if, if there was no cash money coming into your pocket so you can go buy your cigarettes or buy the other things that you enjoy, that you enjoy. Okay, the, government, the government can meet your needs, Steve. They can provide your food. They can provide your housing. And if they're selling them food stamps, why wouldn't they sell this too? Sell what? Whatever they can, whatever this gets them, and whether that's the pin number or a card or whatever you said it was, you know, hustle's gonna hustle because that's what hustle does. Okay. Okay. So even if you don't put a dime in my pocket, I'm gonna make a dollar. Well, you, you know, because you're going, there's going to be a way around it. See, you can't change the system if you don't change the mind. I Steve, see. I, I'm see, one, I, I agree go, with that 100%. until you start bringing hope in. I agree. You know, when that way of life looks better than any hope you have in your heart, something's wrong. All right, Steve, and I agree and we have to address those but, things, man. That's what I'm talking about. See, we're, I'm we're, not talking about cutting everybody off. Re structuring reapproaching what, what it is look like to okay you? i've already said what it looked like instead of you just sitting at home and like you said you're for daycare but if you ain't out hunting for a job there's no sense in me you're a stay-at-home mom right. getting paid or, or you're i'm sending my kids off and i'm playing cards or kicking with my girl or going shopping or something like that i have a problem with that contribute if you're a man that's out there running around having babies, man, and don't want to get a job and want to hustle, well, you're going to have to take time out to take care of the community service work because I'm not paying for street cleaners and park, picking up at the park. I even put a program together to show you how to repair benches or whatever else, man, to give you some work ethic and show you a skill set or something like that. But you will not create babies <laughs> for me that? to take care of. If he'll be too doggone tired to be running the streets, juking and jabbing, you know what I'm oh, saying? Because he's going to be working. You know what? And the more kids you have, the more you work. <laughs> I don't have any problem with what you're okay, saying. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Watch. All right. Watch. All right, man. I bet you there's a cat for my community that's rumored to have X amount of kids. And you know what I'm talking about without mentioning no names. If you put this behind the work, that mean. Population over Norfolk would win half. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't have any problem with that. I my thing is contribute, contribute. Okay. You know, if you're gonna ask me Can't to cut everybody off, if you're gonna ask me to 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 help, you know, make you know make sure that that the streets that I that I ride down are clean. You know, make sure that the nursing homes ha- so, ha- have people the elderly in the neighborhood. That's right. The, you know, maybe the municipal daycare or or any daycare, the neighborhood daycare. You know. Any of the businesses around the neighborhood. See, we're trying to build community. And all that is part of the community. Trying to create a community that we all participate in, we're all contributing, and we're all proud of. Because it works. It looks good. We feel good about living here. I care about the person next door. I care about what's going on down there at the corner. I ain't put in all this work, did all this work to clean this up. And it's just well, the same mentality we grew up with as kids. Yeah, well, I like I said, I see that the um, I, I personally feel that the welfare system as it is, it 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 contributes. You know, it seems like the the, the people that 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 take the most from the community are the ones that that contribute the least to the community. And 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 that to me that that's one of my biggest things. Like I said, Steve, I have absolutely I understand people fall find themselves down on their luck, you know, you lose your job, something happens, and I can understand why why some people might say, hey, I still have kids to feed, I need some help. And you know what, I, I can understand, I, I truly can 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 sympathize, you know, with, 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 with and empathize with them. I, I, I truly can, but I cannot sit by and, and look at look at what I see in the community, and I know that the majority of the people that I'm seeing draining the community, just 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 leaving the community with with in, in tatters, I, I I can't I can't sit by and say that hey I, I'm comfortable with my money going to going to taking care of. It. See now this is where you think I'm going to agree with you, man. Now, the same people, whatever the percentage is. Whether it's my 20 or your 80, those people cost your community double. Why is that? Because nine times, well, I'm not even going to say nines out of times out of 10, a good percentage of that small percentage I speak of, double draw on your community's resources because you have to end up hiring extra police officers. There's more police calls. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So now I'm paying overtime for the police officer. I pay him for the police officer. You know what I mean? 911 operator. Whatever mess you cause, it may cost the landlord property, you know, uh, uh, damage to his property. See, we need to address that problem because I see that problem impacting us. One person being able to draw enough money that would have supported five people just because of their stupidity, okay? In the salary of these people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Damage the property, having to serve a eviction notice, repair the property, re uh, re put an ad out there, the rental notice, you know, so you can rent. See, all these people cause all this money and they get mad when they get a, you know, a UD on them. You can't rent nowhere. You know what I mean? Well, just watch out. Watch out for this next stimulus package, man. Because, you know, it's going it, to, like I said, it, it's, you know, it's going to, it's going to be so astronomical, man. It's going to be figures and, and just going back to one of our podcasts a few times ago, a few episodes ago, you know, we, we, we talked about reparations. It's just funny to me that this country can find trillions of dollars to bail corporations out mm-hmm. trillions of dollars to give to people that didn't lose anything because they didn't miss a day of work, but they can't, they can't look at giving us trillions of dollars. The car for companies three, repeatedly. Yeah. For 300 years of, 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 of slavery and oppression, you know, but did you have anything else you want to close out on? No, I don't want to get you cranked back up, man. No. Nah, <laughs> all right. Well, um, I think that's going to just conclude this episode of dialogue to destiny. Once again, we'd like to thank you for your time. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you listening. I know that this conversation probably gonna gonna you know piss some people off because you know there are there there's people out there that just don't see a world without without government assistance. And I you know what? And that's that's fine. You know, I I'm a person that believes in I I believe in government, but I don't believe 
that 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 people because of their choices should should be able to 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 run and and ask and ask people that have absolutely nothing to do with their choices to help bail them out of their choices that that's just my opinion on that and so if you if you like what you hear in our conversations whether you agree or disagree you know i mean if you if you want if you have something that you want to add to it put a comment in there because we you know we do read them and and we're you know we do try to uh to to respond i know a lot of times people put comments and i haven't i'll be honest i haven't been able to really get into my youtube comments so i haven't been able to to reply to some of them i do i have seen them and i appreciate your responses but uh we're going to go ahead and conclude thanks again for joining us if you like us like us on uh on youtube and um you know subscribe to our our page if you if you want to do that and we appreciate your time thank you peace